So I will tell you two stories. And if you listen to these two stories intently and do a little bit of further research, you will be able to demystify a lot of things related to finance. Hi everyone. So today I have a very, very interesting video for you. The video is about finance. Now finance, the word itself is very scary and a lot of you have written to me that hey, Akshat, you know what, we don't understand finance or can you make a video on covering the basic terms on finance. So I thought that I would shoot a video on this topic. This is a very, very interesting topic and I'm going to simplify it. So I will tell you two stories and if you listen to these two stories intently and do a little bit of further research, you will be able to demystify a lot of things related to finance. So with that said, let's get this video started. So essentially, finance can be categorized into a wide variety of domains. But for the purpose of our discussion, we are going to categorize it into two domains. One is called as corporate finance and the second is called as personal finance. So I'm going to tell you one story each across these two domains. So let's start with corporate finance first and let me start with the story. So the story or the exercise is that let's imagine that you are starting your own venture, right? So congratulations, you are an entrepreneur and you are starting your own venture. What is the first thing that you need? You will say that, okay, we need an idea, right? Comment what other thing that you would need. So the second most important thing would be that, hey, I have an idea, but I need to develop my product or need to set up my office or I need to hire my first employees. So what do you need? You need money, right? That is the precise thing that you need. And what are your options in terms of getting this money in the initial or inception stage of your venture? So the first option is called as FFF, which means friends, family and fools, right? They are called as friends, family and fools because they don't look at your idea. They just literally give you money, right? For example, if you ask your friend that, hey, I have started a venture and we have been friends since childhood. Would you want to give me like thousand dollars so that I can start my product development? Your friend will say that, okay, you know what? I don't even want to hear the idea. I will just give you the money, right? So it's a foolish way of investing, but it's a very heartfelt way of investing. So this is called as FFF or friends, family and fools way of financing. This is your number one option. What is your number two option? So number two is something called as bootstrapping, right? So bootstrapping sounds very fancy, but bootstrapping literally means that essentially you have your own savings and you put that money into your venture. For example, majority of the startups that I have built, those have been bootstrapped. We have not externally raised funds, not because we can't, but at this stage, we don't want to. And I'll explain you the reason why on point number three, right? So the third way in which you can raise money is called as equity financing. Now, this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky. So let me explain what equity financing means. So imagine that this is your company, right? This is like 100% of your company, right? Now, what you do is that you literally carve out a piece of this pie, right? So let's imagine this is 25% of your company and then you sell it off to different investors. Now this could be your friends, this could be VC funds, this could be private equity funds, etc, etc. But bottom line is that you lose a certain part of your company and in return, what do you get? You get money, right? Now, is that the only thing that you lose, right? That you're losing 25% of your company? No, that's not the only thing. You also lose freedom, right? Freedom in the sense that, for example, when you're bringing an external investor on board, then he or she would start giving you a lot of inputs. You have to acknowledge that because they are your investors now. It can be both a good and a bad thing because many investors are very supportive. They get along with you really, really well. So it's a match made in heaven. But if you end up onboarding a bad investor, they can literally derail your entire company, right? So it's a risky proposition, but that's an equity way of raising money for your company. Now, what is the next term? Next term is debt way, right? If there is an equity, way, there is always a debt and equity. So debt means that let's say that you have this entire company of yours, right? You say that, hey, Akshat, I don't want to sell any of my company. Sounds very risky. I don't want to bring external people. What can I do? Then the simple thing is that you go and take a loan, right? So loan is called as debt. So you literally go with your company to a bank, right? And then the bank gives you the loan that, hey, here is one crore rupee for you. Start your venture. and you promise the bank that, hey, I will start paying this amount of money from this month onwards. So that is a debt way of financing your company. So I explained you these four terms very, very intuitively. So always ask a question that, hey, what is debt? Imagine yourself starting a company and start implementing these concepts. Now, of course, there are like much more nuanced understanding to it, but we are keeping this video for beginners, right? So I'm not going to get into more specific details here. So let's move on to part two. The second part of the story is that let's imagine that you have to expand your company. You started the company, you got the money, 
you poured in that money, you developed the product, that product is doing well, but you need to literally like reach millions and millions of people. So you are in that expansion stage of your company. What are your options now? So you would say that I'm looking for a seed round of funding. This is again a finance term that you should be aware of. So seed round of funding means that, hey, it's up to like $2 million. Your product is doing well in the market and it's making a little bit of money, but it's not fostering organic growth. When Swiggy and Zomato started out, they were losing money and up until last year, they were still losing money on every order that they used to deliver. So what do they need to do? They still need millions and millions of dollars more. So that part is called as seed money. So it is usually up to $2 million. And usually this is the first round of external VC investment that generally happens, right? This is the time when equity investments come into the picture. If equity investments are made here, literally when you're starting out a fund, this is usually done by whom? Angel investors, not VC investors, right? So this is called as expansion stage. And here you usually get a VC fund to pour in $2 million or up to $2 million usually in your company. This is called as seed money because this is where the seed is planted for growth. Okay. After this, as your company starts depicting more growth and starts gaining more revenues and profits, you move into series funding. So series funding, you might have heard of the term series A, series B, series C. All it simply means is that more and more VC funds come into your mix. They start pouring in more money. Sometimes it's the same VC. Sometimes there are usually a combination of VCs who will pitch in with a lot of money. So when you hear all these terms that a company has become a unicorn, essentially what is happening is that a lot of people are pouring money in that company. It's not as if that their balance sheet says that, hey, here are like $1 billion in your bank account. No, it doesn't work that way, right? So this is the difference between seed funding and series funding, right? So now the company has expanded. Congratulations, your business is doing wonderfully well. Now what you feel is that, you know what, enough with the Indian market. I've already captured it. Let me now go abroad and try to capture the world. Let me become like, a Roman emperor who wants to capture everything. So what is that stage called as? This is called as massive stage growth, right? And here firms usually execute two types of options. One is called as issuing corporate bonds. And the second and the most exciting part is launching their own IPO. So let me explain both very, very quickly. So corporate bonds are what? This is a part of a debt financing. Again, you're not losing any control or part of your company. You're just taking more loans, but these are now issued in a structured way by the corporation because your company grew, right? It was a small player. It became like a massive, massive player over time. And then you get the power to issue bonds in the public market. So you're issuing bonds and these bonds are then analyzed by different credit rating agencies like Crystal, and they will analyze, give ratings to your bonds. Then you can raise public money from that bonds or major corporations or other organizations can pour in money and give you loans, right? So that's a corporate bond type of a thing. Doesn't sound super exciting because IPOs sound really exciting. So let's talk about IPOs. So IPOs are called as initial public offering. Now your first question would be that, hey Akshat, can they not just keep doing this, right? Bring more and more VC investors, and keep growing their company, making more money. No, right? Because even investors, for example, when I invest in companies, even I would need an exit to make money from the investments that I have made. So in majority of the times, and this is a controversial statement, that majority of the times when IPOs are launched, especially for loss making companies, it's done with the intent of giving VC investors an exit, right? So that term is called as exit. So that is one of the primary reasons why IPOs are launched. Another reason why an IPO is launched is to build the brand and get visibility for the firm. Now, this can be very easily explained if I ask you a simple question. So would you go and work with Facebook or would you go and work with a very high growth startup that you haven't heard of? You most likely are going to work with Facebook because Facebook is a listed company. You keep reading about it. There is so much scrutiny and Facebook has that brand, right? So you have this massive brand going for you. It becomes easy for you to recruit better talent. So these are two primary reasons why IPOs are launched. Now, of course, I can make a separate video on IPO altogether, but this was a basic video. So I hope that you learned a lot from this corporate story. On the next part of this video, I'm going to tell you a personal finance story, which will help you understand the basics about personal finance. And I will release that video tomorrow.